All right, guys. Uh, welcome again. We're going to do a uh, another uh, multi-tool video, and uh, this time I thought I'd talk about some of my uh, vintage Gerber uh, MT500 series uh, tools, and uh, maybe uh, you know let you know that uh, you know basically I've been I I've had a multi-tool since you know uh, since the very first one. You know the uh, the Leatherman PST. I mean, I've I've had I've been carrying a multi tool uh, pretty regularly, almost every day for uh, well since about nineteen. Man, I'm trying to I'm trying to think since about 1990, 1990 ish somewhere in that area is is uh, what comes to mind. But uh, this is one of my uh, very first multi-tools I ever bought, and I carried it for uh, for a long time. And this is the uh, very first Gerber uh, that was released. This is the uh, first generation of the Gerber tool. And I remember when this came out. I can't remember exactly where I got this or how I got this. It's been so long. But... Um, I remember switching from the PST uh, to this, and this was the hotness way back in the day. You had the PST came out, and you know I'd been carrying that for a little while, and then, um, and then these came out, and they were just like the latest greatest hotness, you know. And we know that this is the very first generation uh, Gerber tool because of some distinguishing things. Let me tell you what they are to the best of my ability. One of the bad things about Gerber is that they, their documentation is not as good as Leatherman. They also are not dated, uh, like Leatherman's are. And that's kind of, uh, an oversight that, you know, is kind of unfortunate. They didn't think about the long-term collectability of what they were putting out, and it's and it's kind of a cry and shame. It would be awesome if these were uh, dated, and that we had documentation. Um, you know, like we do Leatherman. Leatherman has always put the dates, the manufacturing dates on stuff, and we know uh, a little bit more about the different versions and stuff. So. On this one here, we know that it's the very first one because only the very first generation one had a polished uh, finish like like the Leatherman PST. So the very first generation came out and it, uh, it had a polished finish like this. And right here at the tail end, there's a patent pending with no number. That's, uh, that's one of the things. Also, another uh, thing to kind of differentiate it from other generations is that the nail nick, see the nail nick right here, there's not one on the bottom, it's mismatched. There's, there's only nail nicks on one side of the tool. And notice that the nail nick on the tool is, is not there. It's on the, uh, if I remember correctly, it is you know, come on the opposite side of the tool. See, here's the nail nick. Here's where it should be, right? And it's not there. So that was, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, that you can tell the older, oldest of the generations from. Also, it has uh, button top screws everywhere. It's got it in the plier head position, and it's got it in all four all four uh, corners of the handle. Um, also, the plier head, uh, this is the first generation plier head. It's got a big uh, pivot bushing that you can't really see behind the frame, but it's got a very large uh, pivot bushing that almost looks like it's like a, like a, like a bearing, but it's not, it's a, it's a pivot bushing. And the, the style of the head is, uh, this is the uh, only year that you'll see this uh, design like this, very fine towards the front. Uh, the teeth, you can see the, the teeth there. So um, so in the, very f in the very beginning, the very first uh, tool that they, that, they, um, that they put out, serrated blade, very similar to the ones that they have in the uh, current ones 
they um, these are all like much harder to get out than they are uh, nowadays. But uh, also, they had scissors. The very first generation um, Gerbers had scissors. These are pretty pathetic scissors, though. Um, they don't work very well. They're kind of weirdly shaped. Um, yeah, so they figured out that scissors were not uh, super easy to do. And the other one is, uh, so the other tools here are uh, full 3D Phillips. Um, so full th uh, 3D Phillips. Let me see if I can get that up closer. Short, stubby, but full 3D. Uh, bottle cap lifter screwdriver, similar to what they do now. And then on the other side, can opener with uh, you know screwdriver on the end, flathead screwdriver, larger flathead screwdriver right there. A this is another distinguishing uh, thing from uh, some of the uh, next generation ones is that look at the thickness of this um, this uh, lanyard ring. It's 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 huge. It's really thick. And then uh, regular, you know, drop point, uh, plain edge blade. That's what's on this. No tools lock. And uh, really kind of a, a, a really good example of a really vintage tool. That's generation one. Next generation tool had uh, nail nicks and they match meaning that the nail nicks on the tools are lined up with the nail nicks and uh, there's nail nicks on both sides of the tool, top and bottom. Um, still, we have button head screws, all four corners right there. Um, the way Gerber is written on the tool is now different because of the nail nick. See where they had to, see here's the first gen, here's this gen, they moved the Gerber writing from here to here. And in the first gen, there was just inches. That's another thing I forgot. There were just inches printed on the side of the tool. Uh, the next generation had just inches on both sides. It's looking like. The finish, as you can see, is uh, a shot blast finished. And still button head screws on the top. Now, um, the plier head is slightly different. See, it's more squared. It's more square here, more narrow here. Here's the side of it. It still has uh, the big bushing. But, and see how the handles are still really close together. The, this uh, generation of the Gerber was called Mr. Pinchy. It was nicknamed Mr. Pinchy. Because if your hand slipped, this thing would uh, give you a blood blister like uh, you would not believe. And in, in this generation, in the next generation, they replaced the scissors with this. Um, it's got a, basically, this is a gnarly, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what they call this, like a reamer all kind of thing with a... Uh, with a wire stripper, but this thing's gnarly. It's more like a, uh, it's 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 more like an exacto knife almost. It's so it's so gnarly. It's definitely brutal. But that's what they replaced the scissors with. You still got the same. Uh, um, is the I think it's the same. Let me see. Is that the right? Oh, it's not all the way out. It's like why isn't this working? Yeah. So the the. Uh, all the other tools are the same. You still have the serrated blade, uh, the drop point knife, and then the um, lanyard loop is now normal sized. Focus, but uh, you can kind of see the difference there. One is just ridiculously huge and one is not, but they put a spacer in there to take up the rest of that space. Um, so, that's uh, generation two, and again, patent pending, no number. Patent pending, no number, okay? 
Moving on to, well, let me put this, uh, put this back. Moving on to generation three. Generation three, what's changed here is the, let's see the plier head, I believe is about the same. Let me see, let's go, let's check out generation two. Now if the plier head changed again, that's right. The plier head has changed again slightly. It's a little bit uh, longer. You know, you can tell that the, the shape has definitely t taken on a different shape. It's more, it's more square. Your uh, kind of your high point is he is here, and on this one it's way down here. So it drops the the plier head down to more towards the front instead of the back. Again, you still have the the bushing. Uh, nail nicks, both top and bottom. Here we still have the button screws on all four corners. And here we have the first patent number. So we've got US patent and then the patent number now. Um, they still got this uh, gnarly like exacto knife type tool in place of the scissors. All the tools are the same. Um, the the um, lanyard looks like they're about the same. It looks like I was uh, mistaken on that. Uh, it's hard to keep these uh, straight. They change so many things. Knife blade, same. So it looks like very subtle changes except to the plier head is really, uh, again, the, um, I believe the finish changed. The, the finishes on these two are not uh, the same. This looks more of a, of a bead blast instead of a shot blast. Yeah, it does. But notice that our handles, look at our handles. That's, that's one of the biggest difference. Look, look at the handles. See how the handles are like really close together? As these get newer, you will start to notice that the handles come farther and farther apart. But uh, there you go. And that's inches on one side. On, actually, inches on both sides still. Inches on both sides still. Uh, the Gerber, look, look at the Gerber where it says uh, Gerber, the writing has now changed. Do you guys see that? See how the Ger the the uh, Gerber name has changed slightly. Look at that. The earlier ones were double, like double like this, and this one is thin and uh, skinny. Okay, so that's about most of the differences between these two. Okay, now moving on to the last one that I have. This one I bought. Can't remember where I bought this. If I bought this off of uh, eBay, I think I bought this one on off of eBay um, just because I didn't have one. But basically, I'm not positive on the generation of this one actually as well. This is either, I believe this to be a generation five. So I've got generation one, two, and three. This is either a f generation four or five, but I'm not positive. If somebody knows, please help me out in the, uh, uh, in the comments. But uh, first thing we'll notice from the previous is that, you know, you can see that now we've got a much more blunt nose pliers. See, previous versions here, see how they've evolved, how they keep evolving and keep evolving. See, first one, second one, third one. I believe this to be a fifth one. I'm pretty sure this is a fifth one or a late fourth gen. So that's what I believe this to be. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know what I, uh, you know, if you know. But much more blunt, okay? That's one of the differences. The next difference is, is that notice the top. Now we have no screws in the top. This is like some sort of uh, pressed in deal. They don't want you to take the plier head out apparently anymore. Now we've got multiple patent, patent numbers, US patent, and then there are two patent numbers. So that's interesting. Um, this one's marked reconditioned, no idea why. Not sure why that is, other than it was reconditioned, uh, for those of you wanting to be a smart ass. Uh, and then this, this one here, 
Um, one of the things I noticed is this is now we've got the file. And this is made by the same company who makes the files for them now. It's Simmons. Oh, man, will you focus, you piece of crap. There we go. See how it says Simmons? Upside down for you, I realize that, but uh, that's the important part. Uh, Simmons, that's who makes their files now. Um, so that's interesting. Are we back in focus? We better make sure of that. Okay. So now we got a file instead of that crazy uh, knife blade thing. Same Phillips. Uh, we have a sheep's foot. Was that the way the other ones were? Let me verify that. Maybe it's another one of those things where I've seen too many of them. Uh, no, it is the same. Okay, so same serrated blade. Okay, just verifying these things as I go. I'm not a, an absolute expert here. I'm just kind of showing you my collection. Trying to give you the information that I have researched and found. Uh, draw point blade. Uh, a different uh, finish. These look to be the same type of finish here. But notice, instead of having button screws on all four corners, see that? All four corners have screws. This now has a button head screw on one side that goes through, and then it attaches into a fixed uh, receptacle, threaded receptacle, uh, very similar to what they're doing now. This, So this was the predecessor to the new uh, style of screws that they use, where one side is fixed, the other side comes off. So that's interesting, that progression. Uh, this, this tool uh, feels not as good as the other one, so I don't know if the manufacturing uh, changed as far as how smooth this is. These are just uh, really smooth. And from what I understand, uh, reading forums and whatnot, is that the early Gerbers were made in uh, machine shops, you know, basically by hand. Um, not by hand, they were made with tooling machines and things of that nature, but uh, very difficult to keep up with production because they were made in a traditional machine shop by machinists. Um, and then later on, they went to mass manufacturing. Uh, probably has something to do with some of these changes here. Now again, uh, super blunt nose. Uh, the plier head is definitely more stout than it, than it was before. We'd have now lost the, the pivot bushing. It's hard to see that. Let's see, can you guys see the pivot bushing I'm talking about? That round, it almost looks like a bearing. This has gone to what we have now, just a pivot. Now this is just a pivot, just like what we've got nowadays. Um, let's see here, what are some, oh yeah, now this, is, this must be where we ship. Now we've got inches on one side, uh, centimeters on the other side. You see that? Let's see, look. Inches. Inches. Now we have centimeters. Inches. Which is kind of an, an interesting uh, change for, for whatever reason. And let's see. Now our plier handles. See how every, every, every generation... The plier handles are slightly farther apart. Can you guys see that? So there you go. I mean, that was the biggest complaint. I remember that very, very clearly back in the day. Is that one of the biggest complaints about these tools were how they pinched your hand. So that's interesting. But anyway, that's my four vintage uh, Gerbers that I've had, um, that I've, you know, that I've carried through the years. Um, you know, so, you know, you can see that I've been a Gerber fan uh, for many years. You know, I'm uh, 49 years old and I've been carrying multi-tools since, uh, like I said, I believe since 1990. I have had a multi-tool either on my person or uh, in my vehicle or, or near me, uh, but mostly carrying them on me for, you know, for all those years. So... Uh, I'm not only a fan of multi-tools, I am a guy who has a lot of actual multi-tool experience, you know, over the course of years. And, you know, um, I remember back in the day purchasing these right off, right off the rack, you know, and um, uh, with the exception of just that one. Um, 
And, you know, I remember it. I remember just, I remember using these and carrying these. And, um, yeah. And I've got lots of multi-tool stories, you know, about uh, where a multi-tool has gotten me out of a jam where I otherwise was just absolutely screwed. And me having a, a multi-tool on me saved the day. So maybe I'll... Uh, collect some of my thoughts and uh, tell you some of those stories one day but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this story of uh you know some of the the tools i no longer use that are in my collection that i uh still cherish you know they're uh i uh yeah you know i'm i'm both a multi-tool collector and an avid multi-tool user so um yeah so i just thought thought i'd share that with you hopefully uh you guys enjoyed that we'll catch you on the next one on Anion.